So 3s square bracket negative bracket x minus 3, close your square brackets, minus 2. So everything outside of those square brackets, that affects your y coordinates. So we're going to do our y coordinates first. My vertical stretch by 3 tells me to multiply my y coordinates by 3. However, then we have a vertical shift down by 2. So after I multiply my y coordinates by 3, I then have to subtract 2. The horizontal and vertical shifts usually happen after you apply the stretches, compressions, and reflections. Always keep that in mind, okay? With my x coordinates, first of all, I have a reflection in the y axis. So that means I have to multiply my x coordinates by negative 1. I've got to do that first. And then, am I going to subtract 3 from my x coordinates? x minus 3? No. What do I have to do? Do the opposite of subtract, which is, William, <laughs> you said no, add 3. So instead of x minus 3, I'm going to do x plus 3. Remember, everything inside of the square out brackets, you're doing the opposite. Okay. So now I'm going to apply this mapping relationship to 3, 4. And don't be afraid if you this is something that you're having difficulty with or you're having a hard time understanding, come sit with your teacher and get lots and lots of help before you go for your test. So, instead of my x and my y, I am going to plug in the point negative 3 and positive 4. So first of all, I have to multiply my 3 times negative 1, and then I have to add 3 to my x-coordinates. With my y-coordinates, I have to take 4 and multiply it by 3, and then I have to subtract 2 from my y-coordinates. So negative 3 plus 3 is going to give me a final x-coordinate of 0, and 12, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is going to be, give me the y-coordinate of positive 10. Does that make sense? Okay. You have to understand this in order to go on. But So it seems like a very simple concept when you're only dealing with one point. <coughs> However, when you have to deal with multiple points on a graph, it's very easy to get confused and make mistakes. So really watch yourself. Okay. Before we move into actually graphing things, let's start with uh, this rational reciprocal function, 1 over x. That's a function that really gives people a lot of trouble because it has an asymptote. But uh, we're going to talk about how to apply different transformations to this function. Um, hmm. You know what? Because we're going to be dealing a lot with this function later on, let's change this. I want to change it to the square root function. So we're going to start with, let's let my parent function, f of x, be the square root of x. And on your test, you could be asked to write the equation and graph after the following transformations. So I'm going to do this step by step. So first of all, I have my square root. So now it's not enough to write my transformation equation. I have to write the new equation, apply the transformations using the actual parent function. So that square root has to be there. If I say horizontal stretch by 5, so the horizontal stretch, is it going to be in front or inside the square root? Does anyone know? Erica? Inside, yes. If I had a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, then I would write that number outside in front of the square root, my A term. But because it's a horizontal stretch, it has to come inside. And because a horizontal stretch by 5 is actually, we write it as 1 over 5. So it's going to be 1 over 5 and then my x. So I have root of x. I've just factored in the horizontal stretch, so the 1 over 5 has gone in. 
Now, a reflection in the x-axis, is that going to go in front or inside the square root? Anyone know? In front or inside the square root? Reflection in the x-axis. Uh, yes, it's going to go in front. So the negative is going to come in front like that. So those two transformations were pretty easy. Let's continue to apply more transformations. So I have my negative in front, and I have the 1 over 5. Now I want to apply a horizontal shift right by 2. Horizontal shift right by 2. So I know I'm going to have brackets. Is a horizontal shift right going to be x plus 2? No, that has to be, it's the opposite. So horizontal shift right would just be x minus 2. Okay. So I'm doing it step by step. I'm not trying to rush and do everything all in one equation. And finally, uh, I need to apply a vertical shift up by 8. So everything inside the square root is going to stay the same. And now I have a vertical shift up by 8, so positive 8 at the very end. And now I have a transformation equation that has factored in the original parent function. Okay? Make sense to everyone? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to be able, it's very easy to read things when they're in this form, the transformation equation form. However, when they're written with the parent function incorporated in, it is a little harder to decipher, even at the university level, so just take your time. Okay, so this is what you're going to be expected to do for the majority of the test, uh, the parts when, uh, where you're going to earn the most marks. So you're going to have to be given, a, you're going to be given a transformation equation, and you are going to have to apply it in this for the first particular case, we're going to apply it to the square root function. And then after you apply, so you've got to fill out all the tables, and then you're going to have to actually graph the function. Okay, so let me show you what we're dealing with first before we uh, go ahead and do this. For every specific function, the square root function has a few key points. In your Unit 11 guide, Every function, it shows you what the key points are, okay? You are going to have to memorize this or understand how to identify it from a graphing calculator because these points are not going to be given to you on the test. You are going to get a blank table and you are going to have to figure it out or like uh, plan it out, okay? So these are the four key points of the square root original parent function. If I go to my graph, I'm going to come back to this, I have plotted out the key points in, uh, on my graph. So first thing you're going to do is memorize those key points and then draw it out on your graph. Now, I'm not going to do this, but every single time, every column represents a different transformation. If we look at our transformation equation, one, two, three different types of transformation. So I have one, two, three different columns. On this part, uh, let me highlight, on the sections that I've highlighted yellow, we're going to write down the mapping relationship and we're going to apply it to all of our points. This is really, really important because you need to write down the proper mapping relationships in order to get the right points. On your test, after each column, you are going to graph what you have. So you're basically graphing each transformation at a time. So on the test, you're going to have one, two, three different transformation graphs. I don't have time to do all of them right now, but we will fill out the entire table. Next, after we do the square root function, we are going to look at my 1 over x function because that has asymptotes. Now, this is an extremely important function to memorize because it doesn't have just four key points. It has one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, lots of points. Our t we're going to need two separate pages just to do this one transformation.